from the people who brought you Black Dynamite. Home is their latest project, Outlaw, Johnny Black, with a Rotten Tomato score of 67% by the critics and 100% by the audience. I don't know how I feel about that. Welcome back to A Tales of Two Bros. My name is Angel. I'm Adon. Where we give you a review at least once a week. Spoiler alert, I saw it Thursday. You saw it just now as it premieres. It's not showing in many theaters. Without question, it's a select theater viewing only. In fact, when today on Instagram, Michael Jai White and his wife were uh, talking about it, you know, trying to, you know, trying to help promote it for a bigger theater viewership. Yeah. Uh, to be able to show on more screens. Now, when I saw it, it was just me, Kim, and one other person. And granted, it was on a Thursday night, you know, a day prior to the national release. What about you? What was your theater th- experience? Maybe six people there. Okay, fair enough. Um, of course, uh, I was the loudest one on certain scenes. Also, uh, after I saw it, I texted you right away. It says, I already know what my favorite scene is. There, there's a couple I can it. think of, uh, but but we'll wait to that there. Yeah, we'll wait to there. Uh, this is to go in the back in the backstory. So this is Michael J. White's directorial debut. He didn't like do the like, Black Dynamite. Shit, you make me look for it now. Let me see. Because I know he co- uh, I know he co-wrote Black Dynamite, and also this one. Well, he directed Never Back Down, No Surrender, Never Back Down to the re- the breakdown. The beatdown, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So his first one was that one in 2011. Never back, never back down to the beatdown, and then 2016's never back down, no surrender. So this is his third. Mm, okay. Black Dynamite. Yes, he was involved as writing and all that stuff, but no, not directing for his own project now, uh, production company, Gigantic Productions. Studios. Yeah, officially, uh, Gigantic Studios. Okay, gigantic. So those, those are our first one. So good. Uh, written by Michael Jai White and Byron Mins. You have here now the music score by Michael Bearden. He was actually the the pianist playing the pian uh, the piano uh, yeah yeah pianist uh, piano yeah well the piano player in the saloon where there's a the bar fight. Yeah, you said the technical name properly. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, you know. Not everybody know what a piano player is called, a pianist? They may think it's a penis instead of pianist. So, piano player. All right, so anyway, it was him. But starring here, we have Michael Jai White again Mm -hmm. as the lead. Now, you have a majority of, I won't say the majority, but the good good portion of Black Dynamite. The, the key players in Black Dynamite were in here. Yeah. But they didn't have as such as big roles except for one, you know, playing Reverend Piercy, Byron Mins. And the sheriff. Uh, right. And the, the, was it the sheriff? Or was he like... The guy who the was sheriff? working with the mayor to sell the town? That was the sheriff. Oh, yeah. He was in... He was in Black Dynamite. Dynamite. Was, oh, okay. Shoot. I am 90% um, sure. I, didn't, I don't recognize him. But before I keep going over the names... For Warren, I tend to pronounce names incorrectly. So there you go. Anika Noni Rose, Erica Ash, Chris Browning, he was the bad guy. Barry Boswick, which I was surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy Couture, yes, Randy Couture, one of many MMA fighters that was in this film that he's done past projects with, and which I was so happy to see kevin chapman which was the marshal u.s marshal the ever so sexy kim whitley i'm sorry i find her sexy tommy davison hysterical deacon fry he was buddy lewis that was gary anthony williams which who he was from the boondocks he was uncle ruckus yeah i spotted him tony baker now here we go uh ma Iquacor. he was elmer which i thought was the <laughs> he was the he was like i guess he's a town idiot Jalen Hall, which was the young Johnny Black, Don Cerrone, MMA fighter, and the other, other ever so sexy Jill Scott. She only had, had a cameo in there singing the song. I don't know, her and Kim Whitley, two sexy mamas. Then you have a lot of cameos, which I'm not going to mention. I want people to see it and see those cameos. 
that Josh Barnett, another MMA fighter, uh, Jimmy Walker Jr., he was one of the old men. Lynn Terman, he was the father of Johnny Black. Oh, Russell Peters, which I thought was a great, and we'll talk about it more, where, like, how this film has so many influence from other things. But what I love about here, that you have Russell Peters, who's an Indian, playing an Indian. He's Indian from India, so you have him playing a Native American, which I thought was hysterical. Oh, they had a uh, lot of stuff that was... It, oh, it, yeah. It, yeah, it, it hit home for a lot of good uh, points. Right. Regan Machado, he's a Brazilian martial artist, but mm-hmm. he played the bride of Piercy. He did a great, I think he did yeah. a great job. Oh, Michael Kohler. He he introduced Johnny Black's family for the shoot-up. Mm-hmm. He's a well-known comedian. And you have other ones here, too. And like I said, he, plenty of cameos but again you got to go and see him because i was like oh my god he's in this oh my god he's in i was like wow that was great Uh, especially at the end where they toast a beer to they toast the two other legends did you enjoy it let me tell you that let me ask you that yes i did enjoy it and actually i openly laughed with uh uh the people in my audience uh even though it wasn't like a packed audience so we like definitely clear scenes that we openly laugh and i i'll frankly I don't openly laugh when I'm watching a film by myself with people mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, right. Like if I'm with you, I'll openly laugh then. But otherwise, you will never know. I'll maybe chuckle. Here I was. It's silly. It's fun. It's a different feel than Black Dynamite. I won't say it's like a Black oh, yeah. Dynamite 2, but it has some moments and vibes to it. I feel like if you had like Black Dynamite mixed with Blazing Saddles, mixed with there, uh, there's another touch that is just missing there. I'm going to get you, sucker. Yes. <laughs> Had a touch of that there. Yeah. With the Indian that we're talking about. Yeah, like yeah. The, like the, well, back in the day, and then, you know, and and I, I understand, and Kim got confused. Like, why is he white? I was like, it's because that's how it was back then. In the film. In films, a lot of the Indians or even, even black people way back were done by white people in yeah. black face. So you have here also white people playing back then, uh, white people playing Native Americans. You have freaking Jesus Christ played by white people. Mm-hmm. I would say a homage to the film genre back then, right? Which he did in Black Dynamite, and he yes. he he used those tropes of those films, not the necessarily mm-hmm. good tropes, and it gave it a, a actually a really good feel to it. As well, yeah, you can weird see as that, that is honoring- to say. He's honoring them. Now, it's not as good or comical as Blazing Saddles. No, 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 no. But in, this, go, in the go fact there, that it's like a satire. The, well, you get, yes, you can see the influence. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean yeah. to say by that. Right. And also how like with the touch of, or not the touch, or the address of racism. Oh, absolutely. Like the scene well, where no, he maybe. kicks the guy. He was like, I was going to say Nick and Poop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but not just that. But no, but the poster. Yes. Right, he says, looks just like him. And it's not. It's actually, um, Jesus, he's another, it's another picture, a picture of a famous actor, comedian, and I can't remember his name right now, but using his face, it's like, it's like, it looks just like him. The guy is clean shaven in the picture. With a big smile, like. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and you see that. I thought that was a funny like, moment, too, when they first Johnny Black that. is like, looking what the hell are we talking about? But yeah, it's going to that same thing. They all look alike. That, yeah, that trope mm-hmm. with Asians, with blacks, and you know, so they address it, and I, I dug it in that way. Now it starts off as a revenge story, absolutely, mm-hmm. and it, and then it changes it more down the line into a love story, a man letting go of his hate, redemption, well, well personal redemption, right? He, yeah, you know, and he finds that through his, he, he finds it, you know, going to going to a hiding, hiding that- in the disguise of the reverend. Into this. Yeah. That's the other part that I was getting. As like when I was combining the movies, Sister Act, a touch of Sister Act. Definitely mm-hmm. that because Sister Act, you have a, a woman that's a criminal, what have you, in hiding, and she dresses as a nun, pers- a nun, a person of the of the faith. Mm-hmm. He does the same thing, and he has to hide it. But granted, there's no love interest in that one. True. But here so now you have the, the right. You have Byron Mintz who played uh, Reverend. 
conspiracy, I don't think his acting has proved because he is acting the same exact way. Essentially. I think that's that he, what that makes him character. like iconic for it. Right. But the way he was talking, it was more appropriate for this because he was a reverend. Yeah. Where in Black Dynamite, he's not a reverend, but he's talking like one. Real big, boisterous, really pronouncing the words and real slower. Like he's giving a sermon all the time and he did in Black Dynamite. Yeah. Fear, fear of fit. So, I mean... I'm hoping that this is part of that universe. I mean, it could be. I mean, technically, if he got more projects like that and they just make a film universe, it's just different timelines and, you know, different right. order in the time of events. It could be mm -hmm. in the same universe. I did read an article where they were saying that this was not the original script for a sequel to Black Dynamite. They were going to do a, a legitimate sequel. It never picked mm -hmm. up. And he's, he's like... We're going to just start from scratch. He wanted to do three different types of films, a Western, a martial arts, and a horror film. This was the one that got picked up, though. So he's like, I'm right. going to go for the Western. I would love well, I mean, to see him do it like up, though, those though, other two. His, but his, his production company, so he, he has- He got to get funding and like get support and stuff. It's still his production oh. company, you know? Right. Now, so there's a lot of nice moments, cool moments, cute moments. But what was your favorite moment? I did love a lot of different moments. I did enjoy the beginning. The final sh uh, shootout at the end, it caught me off guard when uh, when, <laughs> when they were like counting down like, oh, I still have more men than you and eat. everybody oh. kept popping in. And then uh -huh. one person and then one group shows up and it was like so quick and it just reinforced it when they were having the big fight. And I'm like, is that supposed to be Kane from Kung Fu? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fight Chang Kane. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think, saw that. I died laughing. I'm like, oh my God. And he had this guy this, going he's... so slow. like Slow with the staff and all that stuff. Yes, it was. Uh, I called it out too. And, uh, and Kim's like, I don't get it. It's like, what are you talking about? You don't get it. Well, you know, yeah. now everyone's going to get a reference. But I also like that too, where everyone's calling out. And then Piercy comes out yelling. And the guy says, how the hell did he hear me? Yeah. Acoustics. <laughs> Acoustics. What the hell? What? Is that? what? Acoustics. And the Marshall's like, still alive. Uh huh. Who? Who's else still alive? Uh, I'm not going to say too much. We don't want to give too many spoilers because we won't. No, no. Who? Who's much. still alive? Marshall. The Marshall. Oh, oh, because yes. Yeah. The U.S. Marshall. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking about the one that got shot in the, that shot the hat, but no, he got, he was a hard. Oh, no. That would have been hilarious, too. He's like, he I, I shot him in the hat. I was like, but if you're going to hang me for hitting him, shoot him in the hat. That's one thing. I didn't shoot. Right. <laughs> The There's another point of the sense of like racism in that sense where oh absolutely that it was done like that a lot of times where people or, or the people of the black community were accused of stuff they didn't really do he shot the hat because he didn't want to kill anyone because he was saving his bullets for the rough riders especially brent he yeah. didn't want to do anything to tear him to, from his goal but yet shooting a hat which caused the man to have a heart attack because the guy was old anyway my favorite scene and i even text or not text but because i don't have his number but on instagram i reached out to michael jai white with all the pretty much the post that he had of the film and i says i i really love your homage to bruce lee in enter the dragon and it was at the last scene right where he's about to have a standoff with brent he fights three guys. Oh, he that kicks the guy in the nuts. He his, he does a spinning back kick. The guy grabs him. He grabs the arm. He hits the elbow, sweeps the leg, takes him down, hits him, and looks right at Brent, just like how Bruce Lee did it to the guys in Enter the Dragon right before he has a staring contest with Han. It was like beat by beat, move by move, total homage. To Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon, that was my favorite part. Chai White still is very crisp with his fight scenes. No, There's of course, his kicks are like that. He's he's a no, legend of martial arts. He was when he was growing up in the martial arts tournaments, mm -hmm. he was fighting adults while he was like thirteen to sixteen. Mm -hmm. He was fighting full grown ass men while he was still growing, still peaking, and he, he's in his fifties and still can dish it out. But that moment, those what. Maybe one minute worth of film right there. I was ecstatic. As soon as you do, I was like, wait, a I was like, oh, he's doing Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon, baby. Now, what about weak moments? Oh, well, before you go into that, there there is one other scene I want to give credit to. So there was a scene. He must be a fan of this movie because I only saw this scene on clips on YouTube like a couple mm -hmm. times. And he pulled this 
almost right from this movie. It's a scene where he pulls the gun from the, I guess, deputy and keeps slapping the guy. Oh, yeah. And, and the jail cell. That's from a movie. Um, old school. Movie. I want to say it's it's a Terrence Hill. Uh, Terrence Hill or like can't remember the movie. But if you look it up, like my name is Nobody. Terrence Hill epic uh, fight. You'll it's, find that scene. It's basically a guy in a bar. He just keeps uh, he'll slap the guy and or, like pull his gun and, and then put it back and slap him again multiple times it's a hilarious cowboy fight scene and it's apparently a, a old school cowboy movie where this guy's like he's just the fastest draw in the west but he looks like a vagabond another scene that i did like and it was it's like old school like if like if you never saw it on a, it was like a commercial mm -hmm. and it deals with russell peters that russell peters looks at the ground and sees trash or something like that oh no he, he sees up, uh he sees the broken bottles of the broken alcohol. bottles right well right and he turns to the camera, and he has a single tear. And that cracked me up so much because of the commercials of what a Native American walking and seeing the trash that America has made. And he looks to the camera, and there's a single tear coming down. And it was, like, done in the early 80s, late 70s. Yeah, that's all. So when commercial. they did that, I, I, yeah, I, it cracked me up. But now... Weak moment? I didn't really have too many weak moments that, that I, I could really think of. I, I like the, it's one of those weird sensations, like the weak moments just kind of amplified it for me. Mm, I don't have a weak moment really I can think of right now. Do you? Mm, yes. Was it? The run time. It did feel long. Okay. I, I will say that. An easy 30 minutes could have been cut out. It got to a point that Kim's like, come on. Let's, she was getting antsy, restless. I can see I was that. Getting a little, I was getting a little antsy, restless because there are a lot of slow moments where it didn't need to be. I mean, I guess that's a problem when you're directing something and it's your, like your first uh, movie out of your studios. I think for your first film out of your studios, you want to make it a little tighter. Mm -hmm. a little... I can see that. Besides the writing but... scenes, what scene would you clip? If you had to clip one, because it like I get it, like he had he was doing the scenes where he's right around. That's always an easy clip to go from. Oh, like the intro. The intro was freaking long. Five In his defense, long. that's an old school thing because it like a lot of old seventies and eighty uh, sixties films used to do that so they can get people's no. names noticed. A lot of times in the old movies, no, you just you just two minutes. There's the title, the main star, the direct uh, or main stars, the director. That was it. Boom, you just get into it. And a lot of the love scenes. There was one love scene. Not really love, like it says like like naked or having sex. You mean the romancing like romance. or yeah. The romancing, right. It could have been cut Trimmed up. shorter. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, you have multiple stories going in here, and it says, like I said, revenge first and redemption. You have the love, the, the love triangle. That was hilarious. Again, it could true, but it could have been he could have been short, yeah. you know. And I'm I'm also a little disappointed in the sense of like you have some of the MMA fighters in this, but not really showing that much skill. Like you have the Machado playing the wife, and he did a blazing saddle scene with punching the horse. Yeah, it would have been nice to see his him do his jujitsu skills. Just something different it would have been kind of cool. I don't know, it's just just me, but. Because I mean, saying like, why not? You have Michael Jai White doing all these kicks. But then, why like not? at that point, you might as well have Randy Couture like just start doing like MMA moves and like take down some people. Why Re not? I don't mind. Michael Jai White already looked out of fish out of water doing uh, like Bruce Lee and enter, enter a dragon cut scenes <laughs> in the middle of a fight. I mean, true, but I mean, if he did it, why not have other martial arts do it? You have mm -hmm. you know Josh Barnett picking up a guy and just slang him and down. Where Josh Burnett is a shoot fighter, so why not? But you know that's just minor stuff. Just to me, if, if they cut it down, they they if he did a half hour cut, would have been better in my opinion. That's all. Okay. What about the scoring? Where do you feel see yourself with sixty seven percent by the critics and a hundred percent by the audience? Granted, by the time this our review comes out, the score may be different. I think the score will drop down from the audience side because. Probably the amount of people viewing it are going to be lower, but I would, I would definitely want to see this again. So I'm going to be like in the 90s for me. It's going to be, I'll give it like 92. I get around I, 85, uh, which is still fair. That's just a respectable score. Bro, oh no, no, it's yeah. good. It's a good movie. It's just like too long where it doesn't have to be. But like I, I there's not too many comedy westerns that I would say I'd be down to watch. I would definitely be down to watch this again. 
okay. For you, this it's is like a one and done. It's worth a watch. Mm-hmm. I'll probably watch it again, but my drawback, my hesitation is because of length. I'll, I'll be fast forwarding. That's fair. Where in Black Dynamite, I would not fast no, forward. That's a that's a solid hour and twenty five minutes. Black Dynamite. So you're you're See, you you fast forward. You miss so much. That's how tight it is too, because it's like every piece as in Black Dynamite. You're laughing. You're you're getting the references. All that stuff here. You just like move on already. Mm-hmm. But you're not you're not in the same range as like the critics are. Where like in the '60s or anything like that. You're, oh no no no. You're no, definitely no. more in support of the film than against. Right now, granted, we haven't seen. I, I haven't seen Black Dynamite in a hot minute. Would you say Black Dynamite? And I'm gonna say you're probably gonna say yes. Um, speaking out turf for you, Black Dynamite is better than this one. Yes, that's fair. I think both are entertaining films. I think Michael Jai White for a directorial film that it's like you, less than five films that you've done. Not bad. Pretty good, man. Well, I mean, Black Dynamite hits me better or more than this does. I'm a fan of westerns. I'm a fan of comedy. I'm, I'm a fan of black exploitation films. But Black Dynamite has the, the kung fu aspects it has the the black exploitation fu pause that they had back then all the mistakes and similar as well as the talk and the tempo true and the characters the characters are great in black dynamite so like like our father would love probably love this movie he would love it because it's because it's a western absolutely without question i tried wa- making dad watch black dynamite one time and I changed it because he was not vibing with that film. Because it's not a, it's a complete film, but it's presented as not a complete film. Yeah. It, it falls in the line of, I'm going to get you sucker, where you have those weird cousins. and there's people who are breaking out of character, but they're not breaking out of character. Mm-hmm. It's all part of the process. And so, you know, and if, if dad's not a fan of Dolomite, so he, was not. so he would not be a fan of Black Dynamite. But he's a fan of Westerns. And oh, like yeah, said, he's a huge fan. He'll probably be down to watch this as soon as it, not the theater, right. but when it comes out on TV. Because, well, I don't know how, how he'll do since it's so damn long. Yeah, that's even better for him. He can pause it, take his nap. <laughs> but it is definitely worth the watch. I would definitely say so. I will say this. The horse part was funny to me. The horse part? The punch of the horse? No, the first horse part when he's like, I'm gonna like, get you some water and be good to go. And the horse dies. Oh. And then, oh! <laughs> okay. So, okay. There's one other movement, uh, moment I like in the film that caught, I thought was funny as hell. And Kim made a comment about it is when uh, Johnny Black's horse, they're about to get water. Look, they've been riding, they've been on the, on the road, on the field, whatever, and they're about to get water. But he tells his horse, wait here, I'm going to get water. And I was like, that's kind of rude. And the, then the horse drops. Yeah. <laughs> he's, horse as he's drops. feeding the water, you hear the horse drop. Right. And then he goes and he has the bucket of the horse, kicks the bucket. And then Ken goes to me, did he just kick the bucket? I was like, yes, <laughs> literally, the horse kicked the bucket. It is dead. And oh, uh, okay. That so you have some really good moments, and I just keep forgetting. The more you think about it, it pops up. But yes, that was clever. Yes, without saying, you know, the 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 horse died, but in that phrase, kick the bucket, and he literally <laughs> takes it out of his hand. Okay, kudos, kudos. Would is it worth the own? Not for me. I, I will own the poster. Oh, the poster looks badass. The poster is really done well. I yeah. like the poster. I'll be honest. I'll buy it on sale. Mm-hmm. That's me. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not even on sale. It's Maybe gonna, for it, behind the scenes. Maybe yeah. for behind the scenes footage that they did that. And I would love to done if they did like behind the scenes during the credits. Oh, that would be like, good. That, it would have been cool if they did that right during the credits because I was expecting that because they'd done it before with other watchers. Like I think they did it with Blazing Saddles too. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But mm. it's a solid movie. It's, it's good. Just. Keep it short. I would definitely say, like, if people want to go see it, support uh, Michael Jai and his production, go ahead and see it. All right, guys. That is our movie review of Outlaw Johnny Black. Have you seen it? Let us know what was your favorite moment. Did you catch any references to other films? Or did you recognize the cameos from the other actors that came in? Let us know in the comments below. If you have a show or movie you would like us to review, please email us at tells the two bros at gmail.com or leave a comment in the description below. Until next time, we'll be the next time. I'm Angel. I'm Adon. Love you, bro. Love you, too.